Hello again and welcome back to our texture videos. In this video we'll be finalizing our uh, spec map for our head and finishing off our character so making sure it's ready for game. Okay so just continuing on from the last video we're going to um, finish off creating the the specular for the the mat, the face. Uh, so I'm just going in. I've added a little bit of um, dark texture around the cheeks. Now I'm going to go in and create a little bit more of a highlight. So just placing down lighter areas of color so where the, the more um, shinier areas of the face would be. So on the forehead and down the, the bridge of the nose and on the, the top of the cheeks. So this is these are areas that oil uh, naturally accumulates during the day. Also maybe if you, you, you sweat it might be up around the hairline. You can add a bit there if you'd like, but again, just in the the areas that that the light would hit the most, so in the shinier areas of the face. So I'm just using brushes that I found online. Uh, again, so free free brushes that you can find just by searching Photoshop brushes. Make, make sure again that it, that the copyright allows you to use them freely in your own personal work. Okay, so I'm just going through again as well and, and cleaning up some of the layers to make sure that everything is named and uh, in the right folder. Just to keep everything neat and tidy. Once I'm done with the, the face, the shiny parts on the face, I can start working on other areas like the lips. So we, I'm just bringing in... Um, the layers that I, work, I created to so the color layers, I'm making a copy and bringing them up into the spec layer and obviously desaturating them uh, so I can work with a, a, a gray tone, a grayscale image and we, we don't obviously want areas of the, the makeup to be as shiny as um, it would be if we just desaturated so we're adjusting those with the levels as well so we want the lips to be a bit shiny Again, depending on what kind of lipstick she's wearing, if she's wearing um, a light gloss or a matte lipstick, depends on how much, um, how white or how light you make the texture. I'm going to put a little bit of gloss on her lips, so I am making it a little bit white. So I'm just playing with the levels to get the look that I want and then checking it in max to make sure that is how it, it is actually working. So I'll do the same thing for the eyes and for the... Um, the, the eyeshadow, even the hair. Okay, so now I'm pretty happy with um, the spec layer here, so I'm going to call that finish. So I'm just going to do a few minor tweaks and then wrap that up. I'll check how everything is looking um, in Max and make sure everything is named and all of that. So just doing once uh, a tidy over of my layers so that anybody who comes in and uses it other than myself will know exactly where everything is and what's doing what to what layer so making sure that everything is linked or in the right order that I want it to be in so that everybody el anybody else who picks up my PSD and opens it will be able to understand what I've done and where I've put everything in case any changes need to be made so again just saving that out and checking it in max you can see how the shine on the forehead is coming through um, so and yeah so any I'm gonna leave it here now so any other tweaks it'll need 
um, need to be made will be after I see it in engine and see how the light is reacting to the game environment. Okay, so now that I'm happy with how that is working, um, there's a few little things that we can do to to make sure that our, our, our model is game ready. So we may need to make sure that everything is attached. So she is one, one mesh. She shouldn't have more than one, um, one mesh. So if she has separate parts, making sure they're all attached, making sure everything is welded that should be welded. Um, and then I'm going to put an STL check on. So at, um, at the bottom, I'm going to go through, make sure it's hit check and everything is being checked on my STL. And I've just upped the um, material ID as well. Since I've already got two material IDs on Selena, I didn't want her to override one of those. So I'll hit check. And I can see here that I've got some faces that aren't welded. So I know that they're not welded because it's showing up as an open face so that it's red and it's selected. Um, I know that this is either an open face or a triangle and since they're clearly quads it's obviously going to be an open face so I can go in there and I can weld all of these edges together, these vertices together. Okay so I'm going to collapse this edge somehow that's And since it's a small edge, it really shouldn't affect our texture. We'll know once I do it. If it does affect the texture, I'll have to go into the UVs and tweak those slightly. So um, you'll know visually if it's, it's stuffed up your UVs because they'll be stretching or something um, on the screen. So no, that didn't cause any major problems there. So I can move on and continue to fix the model. We'll weld those edges together. So just using target weld to weld them together. This one's actually quite far off the mark, so I'm not sure how that happened, but I'll just use target weld to weld these down because I don't really want to change the shirt. And since it's just the lip of the vest, that it doesn't really matter there. Okay, so just fixing up all these edges. Again, since these are on the inside of the model, I'm not going to worry too much if it has changed the UVs or if there is a bit of a UV stuff up when we weld these together because it's on the inside, no one's going to see it. But if you if you have to do this on the outside of your model where it is actually quite visible, you need to make sure that it's not affecting your v, UVs. So if you're playing with around with the edges, um, it can screw up the shell of your UV. So you just need to be mindful of that. Okay, and there's an end gong on here. We need to make sure that that is welded and we'll get rid of that end gong as well. Just by, I'll use cut, but you can also select the two vertices and hit connect whichever way is work easiest for you. And then I'm just making sure that those are actually welded together. Back on my STL check, I can see if there are any more areas that need to be welded. So all those ones on the teeth and the tongue and the eyes, they are open edges, so I don't need to worry about that. But here on the hairline, again, we've obviously got an open edge somewhere along the line the the UVs must have gotten a bit shove uh, moved a little bit okay so that uh, everything else seems to be correct so there's no more open faces there I can delete that and I can reset my X forms too but I might um, just check Yeah, I'll check to see if there are any end gongs before I call this complete. So I'll open up my ribbon and I'll select um, the element or a polygon and I'll go down to um, selection mode and hit 
non-quad. So everything that is in a quad is going to show up. So all my triangles or, or um, uh, quads that I've cut in half. So any areas that are not four-sided are going to show up and I can just go through and make sure that yes I, I expect that to be two triangles or I expect that to be you know a triangle there but this I can see here right here there's an end gong and we need to fix that so as I said before we can definitely not have any end gong so any polygon that is more than four sides you should not be in your model. Okay, with that done, I can collapse the stack or and reset my X-Form. So just doing a little bit of fi last minute finalization on the scene. So resetting the X-Forms, making sure everything adheres to my naming convention, making sure that Selena is zero in the world space. Um, so she hasn't moved off her, her grid um, space here and making sure that yep there we go I'm gonna have to lift her up to make sure she's not cutting through and resetting my pivot point again I'll reset my X form when I do that and make sure that everything is is correct so um, everything's ad adhering to whatever naming convention that I have making sure that the triangle the tri count or the poly count is underneath the the count that I've been given or as has reached the count or is under it. Under is always better. It gives you leeway. If you need to add accessories to her, you have the polygons because all of her accessories will come out of her polygon more often than not. Um, so just checking again the material, making sure that's named correctly, um, saving my scene and just doing the last minute checks of the layers and making sure that nothing is in the in the scene that shouldn't be. And with that done, our character is complete.